Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dor and I'm one month into studying objective personality type. Actually, I've been studying it for years, but I've taken one month to fully dive into their videos and to understand their content and to develop this series on objective personality and their concepts. Today we're talking about the objective personality cognitive functions. And let's be real here. I think that the objective personality cognitive function theory is probably the worst and the most underdeveloped part of their theory. I'm sorry to say, when I look at their definitions for the cognitive functions, I feel like a lot is lost in translation. Objective personality does something with the cognitive functions that makes me wonder if it's really a cognitive function model at all. I see no relationship to Carl Jung's original theories here. I see no explanation for how they made introverted intuition into what it was in their model. The way I see it, they need to go back to Jung's original source and think about how they used these concepts and whether they should call these concepts cognitive functions at all. Objective personality describes introverted intuition as the act of organizing ideas. If you organize ideas, you use introverted intuition. If you gather facts, you use extroverted sensing. If you focus on tribe reasons, you use extroverted thinking. If you focus on your personal values, you use introverted feeling. That's how easy it is. That's how simple it is. The act of focusing on or doing things based on your personal value system means using introverted feeling. Right. Okay. I feel like something is lost in translation here. I feel like something is missing. The more I look at their data, the more I look at their information and their insight, I feel like this is a very underdeveloped theory. It's like a child delivered a scientific formula to an establishment and said, hey, this is where I am. Look, the sun can be, designed as, can be defined as hot air, and the moon can be described as cold air. Sure, okay, that's an interesting starting point. Do you want to dig a little deeper in that? <laughs> The way I see it, the cognitive functions are far more complicated and require a more in-depth approach. Yeah, you have to understand that the human mind is one of the most complicated things there is. And if you're seeking to explain the cognitive functions, you shouldn't be hiding behind one-liners. So you have to understand the bigger picture of what these cognitive functions are and how they work. These are dynamic, changing, transforming processes. They are movements of energy inside. They are thought processes, reasoning processes. They are actions that are being taken to address things that are happening. So every cognitive function needs to be understood in a greater scheme. Introverted intuition is not just the act of organizing ideas. Introverted intuition is the act of connecting to the world of ideas, as Plato would describe it, learning how you relate to and connect with all the different intuitions and associations of your mind, learning to see all kinds of different systems and patterns and connections, and learning how to process and synthesize and compress these insights into theories, into concepts, into workable frameworks to understand the world. Yeah, introverted intuition looks at and sees how it's connected to everything that's happening around it. It tunes inside, looking at its own associations and its own theories and its own connections. And it sees how to translate that and how to express that in the outer world. Introverted intuition is a movement of energy from one's unconscious possibilities or ideas to the outer world of how to manifest what you do and how to use your ideas to explain the future, to explain what's going to happen, to explain what's going to become the next thing. Yeah, as you can see, when you want to understand the mind, you can't go to McDonald's and order a cheeseburger. You can't go and say, hey, here's a nice one-liner. <laughs> you need to take time to really process and think about how you experience the world how you experience life, how you experience your thinking process, your decision making, and how you engage in these processes. How do you make decisions? How do you think about things? What kind of archetypal manifestations do your, does your mind create in order to comprehend and explain the world? How do you explore and experience everything that's happening around you? 
you're too complicated to be defined by a one-liner. Yeah, there is more to be learned, more to be discovered. Objective personality offers, honestly, no real explanation or elaboration on how they use their concepts. Perhaps they're onto something, but I wouldn't be able to tell. The way they use their concepts in their videos and in their explanations is insufficient. It's not enough for me to say, okay, this is a theory or this is great. I think, honestly, they're just using the cognitive functions as new dichotomies. They've made the cognitive functions so simple that they're just actually representations of their base dichotomies. Self, tribe, organized, scatter, values, reasons, ideas, facts. Yeah, what they've done is they've just picked these things together and they've said, okay, these are the cognitive functions, but they haven't actually taken the time to think about how these things are cognitive functions. Yeah, it's just a system of dichotomies, of pairings of dichotomies. It's not a system of cognitive functions. I want to be honest and say there are things I definitely like about objective personalities model, and there are concepts I find really interesting, but it's a system that needs a lot more work. And it's a system that promises to be a lot more than what it is. It's so far from becoming a complete model. It's so far from being anything representative of anything real. It is as a grain of sand in what needs to be so much bigger. It's an interesting premise if it was marketed as such, but it's not. It's marketed as objective. It says it's the only science. It says all other models are pseudoscience. It says it's the great next thing. It says everyone is stupid but us. And honestly, that doesn't work for me. I really hope that their definitions on masculine and feminine types is going to have more promise. I hope to talk about that in my future video. Subscribe and like for more videos like this and see you all in the next video.